Hello and welcome to Acrylicode. Today I'll show you how I did this audio reactive animation with Touch Designer and Bespoke. So when we play music, the shape reacts like this. This is the network uh, we're creating, so now let's go ahead and start from the beginning. We will start from this point since we just uploaded a tutorial on how to make this from scratch. So in case you haven't watched the tutorial yet, I will link it down below and you can go first get this animation running and come back here to this video to make it audio reactive. Now the way I went about this is I used this other software called Bespoke, which is modular and node based, just like Touch Designer. I will also leave a link below where to download Bespoke. Now, uh, what I'm basically doing is I'm creating MIDI signals with Bespoke and sending them to Touch Designer to react with the shape. The advantage of this is that I don't have to isolate the channels of the signal, instead I can receive the MIDI signals directly and have a clear reaction to the kick, for example. So when you're all done with the shape, go ahead and open Bespoke. This is what you'll see when you open it. Right here on the top left part we have the global data and on the bottom here we have the output. Now let's go ahead and create our instruments. Go to instruments and select drum sequencer twice. They're both going to be the same and send the same output. Let's go to the synthesizer, create a drum player and connect it to the bottom drum, drum sequencer. Go to effects next, add a MIDI output and connect the top drums to it. Right now I'm running on a Mac, so I have this IAC driver to route it. If you're running on Windows, you should also get a virtual MIDI device. Here let's connect the drum player to the output and go back to the drums and play around with it. Let's uh, start first with a kick and add to it to become more dynamic. This is also a trial and error for me, just do something that sounds nice to you and has a good kick for the reactiveness. So now we have a node here and what we need to do is send this to Touch Designer. To do this, let's go ahead and fill in the same squares in the top drums as in the bottom ones. This will be constantly sending our data to the virtual device. Now let's go back to Touch Designer, open Dialogs and click on MIDI di Device Mapper to open this window. Here where it says in device it should be connected to the IAC driver. I have here a custom bus but um, you can also create this if you go to the audio MIDI setup in your Mac and set, it, set up uh, your own MIDI driver. So let's go back to our touch designer project, press tab and add a MIDI in. Here we have the three nodes that are being triggered. Let's go ahead and connect the select, press P to open the parameter window and select the kick, which is channel number 5. So if we listen to the music, we can tell this always changes when we hear the kick. Let's copy paste the select and um, select channel 6 for the claps. Repeat the steps for channel one to select the tomb. Now that we have all that figured out, we can connect each of the selects to a respective null and rename the nulls to kick, clap and tomb. We saw in the beginning that every time we heard the kick, the camera went closer to the shape. So to achieve that, we have to map the kick to the camera. So let's go to the camera and decide, decide for yourself the range of the translate. I want it to go from 1 to 5, so... Once we know the range, we add a math down here, go to range and set it from 5 
to 1. Let's put the Kik Viewer active, drag it and hover it on top of the camera until the camera parameters open, drop it on the translate operator here and select chop reference. Now we see that the camera is reacting to the kick, but it looks, so, uh, it looks too abrupt, so let's go ahead and smooth it out. Let's make some space here and create a lag. By changing the lag parameters here, we have more control about how strongly the camera reacts. Let's see if this uh, sounds nice and looks nice. <laughs> Great, so let's do the same with a clap, but map it to the colors instead. So we have here already two ramps and a cross, and the cross is where we're going to drag and drop the clap. Now here we have the same problem we had before, that the colors are reacting too abruptly. So let's add a lag again, and that will fix it. The reason we don't have to put a math, math down here is because both ranges here go from 0 to 1. For the last effect, let's go to the transform of the shape. In the MIDI scale here, we want to map the last parameter from the MIDI. So let's decide first how big we want the scale to be. And once that's done, add here a math and set the range you decided on. I'll set it from 1 to 4. Put the null viewer active, drag and drop it to the transform scale and select chop reference. Now let's smooth out these signals as well by adding a lag. So that should do it. Now let's listen to the whole thing again. So that was it for this tutorial. What do you think? I hope you get creative and try this out with different animations at different values. Please support us by subscribing and liking the video and leave us suggestions in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!